Today's topic is terrible games on the Commodore Amiga, in which we go into gaming history to take a look back at some of the most terrible, cringeworthy and simply strange games ever made. Before we begin though, I must give you fair warning, what you are about to witness may astound you. These games are so awful, they make you question your entire existence, but don't worry, I'll be here to help you through this perilous journey. Number 20. Renegade 3. So what makes a game bad, you may wonder? Well, to begin with, there's the graphics or lack thereof. And some of these games might as well have been coded using Microsoft Paint. There's also the gameplay, again, or lack thereof. Imagine spending hours upon hours hitting random buttons in the hope that something, anything happens. And that's how some of these games make you feel. Now, Renegade 3, I don't think was officially released on the Amiga, but the code's available, so it makes the list. Some games have the sound of a strangled cat, while others have the sound of a robot having a seizure. Now, Rise of the Robots on the Amiga, oh my goodness, uh, where do I even begin? Uh, this game was so horrible that it felt like the developers were deliberately trying to make me fall out of love with computer and video games. On the graphics, they may have appeared remarkable at the time, but let's be honest, they haven't aged well. The robots themselves appeared to be built on cardboard and coated in tinfoil. Now, Street Fighter is terrible. I mean, the original Street Fighter in the arcade, in my personal humble opinion, is shocking, it's terrible, it's bad, it's awful. That's right folks, before it became the iconic fighting game we all know and love, it was a clunky mess that was widely panned by critics and gamers all over. Still, I can't stay too angry with it because it paved the way for future fighting games and established what would become one of the gaming's most popular genres. Now this is awful, this is a bad one. We've got clunky, messy and unresponsive controls. There's absolutely no doubt that this was a massive steaming pile of pixelated garbage. Worse still, the graphics were about as appealing as a week old bowl of porridge left out in the sun. I mean, the controls are atrocious. You might as well be playing the game wearing oven mitts. So in short, Street Gang on the Amiga was a complete and utter disaster. Ah, Thunderburner. Mm. I had this on the Amstrad CPC as well. It was like someone took all the worst elements of every bad game ever made and mashed them all together into one giant steaming pile of excrement. But that isn't even the worst part. The gameplay was clumsy and frustrating akin to performing brain surgery with chopsticks. Honestly, I've played better games on a Nokia 3310. So the best way to sum this one up is primitive. I'm not sure about Tube Warriors, but you'd have felt like a tube if you'd have bought this back in the day. My goodness. The controls were slow and unresponsive and the gameplay was as interesting as watching paint dry. And don't even get me started on the sound effects. It's as if they simply recorded someone farting into a microphone and called it a day. I mean, it's no surprise that Tube Warriors was overwhelmingly despised by both critics and players. It's one thing to make a tough or complex game, but Tube Warriors was simply plain bad. Playing Akira on the Amiga is probably the equivalent of eating a turd sandwich. And in both cases, I'd probably imagine you'd regurgitate. I think I would almost prefer a root canal. Now, nah, scrap that because a root canal is more painful than childbirth. <coughs> or so I'm told. <laughs> but the real issue with the game is the difficulty level. It was like trying to climb Mount Everest in flip-flops. And I can't forgive it because it's such a waste of a good license. I mean, seriously. You'd be better off playing with a soggy sandwich left out in the rain. I mean, the controls are about as responsive as a disabled horse. 
and you end up taking hits from guards because you're too bored to even try and dodge them. <laughs> Sounds like a real winner. In a nutshell, uh, it appears to be a bland, uninspiring game with no redeeming elements. And after all, they did make it to look exactly like the TV show. Say no more. I think the thing you've got to remember about Battletoads on the Amiga is that it's a port of the NES with terrible controls, i.e. one fire button and no music. Now, seven people worked on this game, and you've got to also remember it was 1994. And then when you think about 1994, people really knew the Amiga by this time really well. They knew the innards of the hardware and how to make it sing. Ah, uh, Cliffhanger. I actually really like the movie. A lot of people say it was rubbish. Now, the game on every system I've ever played is absolute tripe complete garbage. I suppose the Mega CD version at least tried, but even so, there's only so much you can do with a badly curled poo. I must admit, I did struggle to find really bad games on the Commodore Amiga. There's lots of average games, and I realise that's highly subjective, but this is definitely up there. It's one of the worst. I love a fighting game. I love beat-em-ups as well. And this, colour-wise, there's a lot going on. There's good animations in the background with a waterfall there. But the fighting mechanics and the look and feel of the characters just feels archaic. And it feels badly put together, badly packed all in. It's painful to play and it's painful to watch. And I think it's safe to say, and I'm sure it's got its fans, but for me, it's a complete disaster. I do remember staring incessantly at that loading screen there. If you like the idea of programming tanks and shooting bad guys as they try to escape or bring general havoc in stolen vehicles, then Dark Century is the game for you. For everybody else, there's Big Track. That's correct, delivering fruit to your father or a newspaper on the back of your Big Track is infinitely more fun. I do need to be careful though because apparently this game has its fan base. I will give it a couple of things though. It looks good and it sounds good. I absolutely love the movie. I'm a sucker for racing games and racing movies. It was basically Top Gun in cars. Sadly the game on the Amiga is just too slow. Think less Days of Thunder and think more Days of Boredom. I do remember having a little bit of fun on the Game Boy version and I remember getting caught up in all the hype, all the previews in Amiga format so it was a bit of a bitter pill to swallow when I finally played it. Oh my gosh, this was such a disappointment back in the day. I originally had it for the Amstrad CPC and the game and the mechanics and Oh, it's just such a waste of a license. I can't believe they released this trash. And those flames coming at you aren't actually coming at you. You're just plowing forward and it's given the illusion. And I was a massive fan of Captain America back in the day. So talk about soul destroying. It's only saving grace was the free Marvel collector's comic book that you got free inside. I'm sure in somebody's head, this made sense. I'm sure somewhere this was a technical achievement and paved the way for the likes of international superstar soccer. In fact, there was a game by Gremlin called Actual Soccer. But even if this was the first, it was most definitely the worst as well. And everybody outside of Liverpool and Scotland knows that Graham Souness is a massive cock. And I reckon he's wearing a wig. If you look in that picture, his hair's just not sitting right. It's kind of going at an angle. This is basically Freddy Hardest in South Manhattan. I had the original Freddy Hardest on the Amstrad CPC and I think I played the ZX Spectrum and I've definitely got good memories of playing both of those. But this one is a poor man's Kung Fu Master and I can't believe they released this sort of tripe, this sort of trash on the Commodore Amiga knowing how powerful of a computer the Amiga is. If you bought this, I can imagine you'd be really disgruntled. 
and I imagine the programmer needed his own guardian angel after this. If he dies, he dies. This was another game I had on the Amstrad CPC and it was shocking. If you thought Street Fighter was bad, well this game is just full of oversized spanners with false tits. Yes, avoid this one like the plague, or should I say COVID, or is that too soon? In fact, who cares? This game was a con over us, just like COVID. Oh, shut up, you know it's true. Back then, US Gold were the disease, Ocean Software were the cure. Or was that Gremlin Graphics? I can never remember. Jeez, the years have flown by. Uh, a poor man's International Karate or International Karate Plus albeit more expensive. I can't fault the game in the sound department or with the graphics, I quite enjoyed them, but the whole thing can be whizzed through in less than five minutes. And where's the freaking dragon that you get on the cover? Talk about false advertising. But surprise, surprise, some people actually like this game and others found it really difficult to play or progress. But seriously, just punch from the hip. Works a charm. It came down to this or Chase HQ, and I went with this. But I kid you not, Chase HQ was a whisker away. There's a couple of things that I'm gutted about on the Amiga. Number one, Chase HQ. It was a terrible arcade conversion. And number two, the Amiga never got wet Le Mans. But when you play Chase HQ and you play this, and another game that shall remain unnamed, you can't help that it was a blessing and all that pain and all that heartache that we probably would have received. We were spared. This is it, this is the big one. This officially, according to me, i.e. Classic Replay, is the worst, most terrible game on the Amiga. But there's light at the end of the tunnel. If it weren't for this game being so appalling, we'd never have got Lotus Turbo Challenge. And today, the Commodore Amiga is going through a bit of a retro resurgence. So mistakes of the past are being put right. And one of those mistakes, i.e. Outrun, has been put right by a game called Cannonball. So see ya, au revoir.